that this lecture is part of an online course on Galois theory and will be about splitting fields. So suppose we have a field K and we have a polynomial with coefficients in K. So we might have a polynomial P of X in the ring K of X. And the problem we want to solve is find an extension um, of K. So we want to find an extension field L so that um, all roots of P are in L. Well, um, saying all roots of P are in L doesn't quite mean anything yet because, you know, what is a root of P? So we shouldn't really say that. What we, what we should say slightly more precisely is that P factors into linear factors in, 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 in the ring um, L of in the ring L of X. In, in, uh, in other words, L contains um, all roots, well, or at least L contains n roots of P where, where P has degree n. Um, well, um, if we've got a, an extension with this property, then any bigger extension will also have the same property. So um, we really want the smallest extension with this property. So, um, so this is property one, that P should factor into linear factors in L of X. And property two, we want L to be as small as possible. So we could say L is generated by um, the roots of P over K. That means um, it, it has to be a minimal field containing all the roots of P, or in other words, everything in L can be written as some polynomial in the roots of P with coefficients in K. So if a field has these two properties, L is called a splitting field of K. Actually, calling it a splitting field is, is slightly sloppy terminology because um, what we want is not just the field L, but the field L together with an embedding of K into it. But um, as usual in mathematics, um, that the terminology is is a little bit sloppy because if you're completely precise about everything it becomes um, completely impossible to understand what's going on. So let's have some examples of splitting fields. So um, let's take a polynomial p of x to be linear x minus a naught. This, well then the splitting field is just K itself. So the splitting field is just K. That's completely trivial. So let, let's do a slightly more complicated example. Let's take P to be quadratic X squared um, plus um, A1 X plus A naught equals naught, for example. Um, then um, if this is reducible and splits into linear factors, the splitting field is K again. So suppose it's irreducible. Well, then we can construct a new field L um, by just doing the usual construction. We take the ring of polynomials over K and quotient out by the ideal P. And this is, this is now um, a maximal ideal because P is irreducible, so this is a field. And it contains a root of P. I mean, the, the image of X in this field L will be a, a root of P by construction. In fact, it contains all roots. Because um, um, if P factorizes as um, X minus alpha times X minus beta, then alpha plus beta is minus a1. So, um, and a1 is, is in the field k. So, if a field contains one of the, if, if an extension of k contains one of the roots of this polynomial, it contains both of them. So, so this is now a splitting field. 
So polynomials of degree one or two, splitting fields aren't really terribly interesting. They're, they're, you just get them by adjoining a root. Um, things become a little bit more complicated for polynomials of degree greater than two. So let's look at the next example. So let's just look at x cubed minus two and let's work over the field of rational numbers. And then we can form a field L by adjoining the cube root of two. Um, or if you like, you can think of this as being Q of X modulo X cubed minus two, since you can easily check this is irreducible. So these two fields are the same. So here we're thinking of this field as being a, a, a subfield of the real numbers. And we can think of this as just being some sort of abstract field. It doesn't really matter what you do. And now we can ask, so, so, so L contains one root of this polynomial. What about the other roots? Well, it doesn't contain the other roots because um, if you think of R as being contained in the complex numbers, you can draw where the other roots are. So one of the roots is going to be the cube root of two, and the other two roots are going to be the, the cube root of two times cube root of unity. So this is the cube root of two times omega. And this is the cube root of two times omega squared, where omega equals minus one plus root minus three all over two is a cube root of unity. Um, and now what you notice is that um, this field here, L, is contained in the real, so it can't possibly contain these two other roots. So L does not contain all roots of P. And as usual, this is a sloppy way of saying that P doesn't factorize into linear factors over L. So, so P, the, the polynomial P, which is x cubed minus two, now factors as x minus the cube root of two times x plus um, x squared plus the cube root of two, x plus the cube root of two all squared. And this is now irreducible over L. So what do we do? Well, we can now just adjoin a root of this to L. So we form a new field M, which is just L, and now we adjoin some polynomial X. Maybe we'd better call it a different variable so we don't get confused. And we now quotient out by Y squared plus the cube root of two Y plus the cube root of two squared. And now this is again a field. So what we've got is we've started with k, which was the rationals, and we extend it to L, which is the rationals with the cube root of two adjoined, and we extend this to a new field M, which is Q with the cube root of two, and also this number omega adjoined. And now M is now a splitting field. And let's work out its degree. Well, this is degree three, because we've adjoined a root of a cubic polynomial, and this is degree two because we've adjoined um, a root of a quadratic polynomial. So altogether, m over k has degree six. So we found a splitting field of this polynomial which has degree six. Well, let's look at another example of a degree three polynomial where something a little bit different happens. So now we're going to use the polynomial 8x cubed plus 4x squared minus 4x minus 1. And this is the polynomial we had in the previous lecture. And the roots were cosine of 2 pi over 7 and cosine of 4 pi over 7 and cosine of 6 pi over 7. And you can easily check it's irreducible. So we can start with q and we can form a field Q of X modulo, let's call this polynomial P of X, so I don't have to write it out every time. And this extension has degree three. And now you may think we're going to do the same thing in the previous example. We're now going to take, we found a degree three extension which contains this root. And now we're going to find another degree two of extension of that which contains this root and this root. Well, we don't need to because um, cosine of 4 pi over 7 is equal to cosine of 2 pi over 7 all squared um, um, times um, 2 minus 1. This follows from the fact that cosine of 
2 theta is 2 cos squared theta minus 1. So we see that if we are joined one of the roots of this polynomial to Q, we've automatically joined the second root because it's, it's, a, it's a polynomial in the, in the first root. So this is now the splitting field and its degree over Q is 3 and not 6 as, as in the previous example. Um, so um, splitting, when you construct a splitting field um, you sort of start off by joining a root and then maybe you have to join another root, maybe you've already got the roots already there. Um, as you can imagine, for polynomials of degree greater than three, things get more and more complicated. Um, so let's just give a very simple example of a degree four polynomial. So as we, we look at the, at the polynomial x to the four plus one, which you can easily check is irreducible. And let's work over q, although we don't really have to. And if alpha is a root, well, so is alpha cubed, alpha to the 5, and alpha to the 7, because if, if alpha to the 4 is equal to 1, then alpha cubed to the 4, sorry, if alpha to the 4 is equal to minus 1, then so is alpha cubed to the 4. Um, in fact, you can draw these roots in the complex plane. They're all roots of unity, so they sort of live here. This might be alpha, alpha squared, alpha cubed, and alpha to the 4. So again, um, if we had joined one root of this polynomial to the rational numbers, we automatically had joined the other three. So the splitting field is Q of alpha, which is just isomorphic to Q of x over x to the 4 plus 1, and it has degree 4, um, and not you know, 4 factorial or something, as you, you might expect in general. Um, so, now that we've seen some examples, um, let's just um, show that splitting fields always exist, and we're going to show that they're sort of unique, although, as we will see, there's, there's, there's a little bit of a problem about uniqueness. So, let, let, let's look at existence of a splitting field. Well, here we're given a field K, and we're given a polynomial P. And it's not necessarily irreducible. So let's write p equals p1, p2, and so on, where the pi are irreducible. This means irreducible in k of x, because of course they might become reducible in some bigger field. And let's set k0 equal to k, and let's put k1 equal um, k0, and let's join a root of one of these polynomials, p1. So we might quotient out by p1 of x. So this is now going to be a field because p1 is irreducible. Um, <clears throat> and we're going to assume the degree of p1 is greater than 1 because if it's equal to 1 then it's kind of stupid adjoining a root of it. Um, and um, now um, we say if if p splits into linear factors, then we can stop. So, but if p has a factor of degree greater than 1, we do this construction. And now we repeat with k1 and p. So again, if p splits into linear factors over k1, we stop. And if it's got a nonlinear factor, we repeat and get k2 equals k0 of x over something else. Um, so um, so over, over k1, p will split more than over k0, because you see we've adjoined a root of p1, so p1 is going to split as a linear factor times something else. So we can continue reducing the degrees of the factors of p until they're all of degree 1. So we just continue until p splits into linear factors. And it's pretty obvious the field we construct like this will be a splitting field because um, by construction the polynomial splits into linear factors. On the other hand, it's also pretty obvious that the field extension we've got is generated by all the roots, by roots of P. So this gives us a splitting field. 
Um, however, it's not entirely obvious that this splitting field is unique up to isomorphism. You see there was some choice. Instead of first adjoining a root of p1, we could have adjoined a root of p2 and maybe only adjoin the roots of p1 later. And uh, is the, is, does the field we get depend on what order we add these in? Um, sounds plausible it's independent, but we do actually need to check this. So let's uh, talk about uniqueness. What we're going to show is that any two splitting fields of P over K are isomorphic. And you've got to be a bit careful because I don't just want to say they're isomorphic as fields, I want to say they're isomorphic as extensions. So what this means is if we've got two splitting fields L and L prime over K, what this means is there's an isomorphism from L to L prime, which, which sort of commutes with the embedding of K into L and L prime. So this is, this is a little bit stronger than just saying L is isomorphic to L prime. But as usual, we're quite often a bit sloppy and just say that the splitting fields are isomorphic and it's kind of understood that we, we should um, remember to um, include the inclusion of K as part of the structure. Um, well, in fact, it's, it's slightly easier to prove, um, to restate this theorem slightly. So what we're going to do instead is, suppose you've got a field K and an isomorphism to a field K prime. And suppose we've got some sort of splitting field of K and some sort of splitting field of K prime. So this is going to be a splitting field of the polynomial P and the polynomial P is going to correspond to a polynomial P prime and we're going to take a splitting field of P prime. And what we want to do is to construct an isomorphism from L to L prime. So, so, so this is the map we've got to construct. Um, in fact, we can do it a little bit more general than this. Instead of assuming L is a splitting field, let, let's just assume that L is generated by some roots of, of P. So it might not actually contain all roots of P. And here um, we're going to assume that L prime contains all roots of P. P prime. That, that means P prime splits into linear factors. So this might actually be bigger than a splitting field and this might be smaller than a splitting field in general and, and we want to show there's a, there's a map from there to there. Well we do this as follows. What we do is, is we factor P over K. So let's write P equals P1, P2 and so on with, with PI irreducible. And then we're going to extend K to a field K1 um, of we're just going to look at the field generated by a, a root p1. And now over k prime, um, this p prime spits as p1 prime, p2 prime, and by assumption l prime contains all the roots of p1 prime. So, so we can have a root of p1 prime here. Sorry, that shouldn't be k of p1, that should be k of alpha. Um, so here this is going to be a root of P1 prime and now we can construct a map from this field here into L prime just by mapping the root of P1 that we selected to the root of P1 here. And now we can continue like this. So now we factor P over, over this bigger field and we get to K2 and K3 and so on and we just sort of keep going we build it up and we can construct um, uh, um, a map of fields from L to L prime. Um, in particular, we see that the degree of L must be less than or equal to the degree of L prime. That's the degree of L over K. That's the degree of L prime over K prime. Because we've embedded L into L prime. And now suppose that L and L prime are splitting fields. Well, then we can reverse the argument and have a map the other way so we find the degree of L prime over K prime would be less than or equal to the degree of L over K and therefore they're e therefore these degrees are equal so the degree of L over K is equal to the degree 
of L prime over K prime. And since these have the same degrees, in other words, they're the same dimensions as vector spaces, this map reconstruction must be an isomorphism. So we've shown that any two splitting fields are isomorphic. Well, you might think this shows that there's a splitting field for any polynomial, and in some sense you're right. But the, the, the problem we have, is it a splitting field or the splitting field? Um, in other words, um, we would talk about a splitting field if there are lots of splitting fields and there's no particular reason for choosing one of them. And we would call it the splitting field if there's a sort of canonical way of choosing a splitting field. Um, so, yeah, I, I sort of apologise to anyone who's Russian and trying to understand this because Russian doesn't actually distinguish between the definite and indefinite article or whatever. The, the problem is, suppose we've got a splitting field of K. So I've constructed a splitting field and you've constructed a splitting field. And fine, we've just shown there's an isomorphism between them. But the problem is this isomorphism is not unique. Um, so you could say they're the same splitting field, but in some sense they're not really, because if I pick an element of my splitting field, which element of your splitting field does it correspond to? Well, it's not really clear because, you know, there, there, there's a choice of isomorphisms. Um, there's an actual example of this we can give. So, so if we take the real numbers and let's take the splitting field of the polynomial x squared plus 1. Well, we all know what the splitting field of this is. It's the complex numbers, which is r adjoined i times the square root of minus 1. Well... Then you go over to the engineering department and you discover the electrical engineers have also constructed a splitting field of the reals for this polynomial. But their splitting field is different. It's Rj. Um, they claim they can't use I because I is already used for current or something, so they have to use J. And we know these two splitting fields are isomorphic, but, you know, what's the isomorphism? What does I correspond to? Because there are two possibilities. We could map I to j, or we could map i to minus j. And it's not clear which we should use. You might think it's, you know, we should map i to j because that's the most sensible thing to do. But you have to remember these are electrical engineers that we're talking about. They're the people who got the sign of the electrical charge wrong. And, you know, maybe they got the sign of the square root of minus 1 wrong as well. So we should map i to minus j. Um, so what's the right thing to do? Well, it's not really a meaningful question. Um, there's just this sort of ambiguity that turns up all the time whenever you've got a splitting field that you... It's, it's a little bit hard to pin it down because there's a lot of ambiguity. We, we will see this problem turning up a little bit later on in the course. Um, it's not really a major problem. It's just a sort of minor bookkeeping problem, but it occasionally trips you up because... Um, it causes minor problems if you're not watching out for it. Um, so um, what we're going to do in the next two lectures is give a couple of applications of splitting fields. We're first going to define algebraic closures of fields and then um, construct some finite fields.